Laura Patterson, and I'm an HR advisor with Zenefits. Um, today, for our 12-minute Tuesdays, I wanted to focus on a topic that, as an advisor, I have to address quite a bit, and that's employee handbooks. So today, the focus will be on the importance of having these handbooks, how to get started, how to enforce the handbook, and most importantly, how to actually get your employees to read it. So let's get started. So the question I get a lot is, do I have to have an employee handbook? And I get it. That's kind of a daunting task when you're starting a company to then have to write a 50-page employee handbook. So what I want to say is technically, it is not illegal for your company to not have a handbook. That being said, I highly encourage that you do. And there's a lot of reasons to have that handbook, and I do want to go over those today. The first reason is it is the easiest way for you to house all of your policies and benefits for your employees to view and understand. It's a great way for employees to know what's expected of them and what they can expect from the company. The next thing is a lot of states require companies to have certain policies, and the handbook's the great way to house them. For example, California and now New York are requiring companies to have sexual harassment policies, and it's a lot easier to put that in your handbook and have employees read it and acknowledge it. Another thing to consider is this is your employee's first introduction to the company. It's their initial handshake. It's their way of seeing what the company values and what type of benefits they can receive. Another thing to consider is that your handbook shouldn't just be a list of policies. Instead, you should treat it as a way to let employees know a little bit about your history and your values. Um, another thing to consider is your handbook can protect your company against discrimination claims. So if you have set policies that state, if an employee does this, then we do this, then you can let employees know that you will fairly discipline them based on the policies in the handbook. Another thing to consider is if you do have those disciplinary issues, you have that policy in place so you can tell employees, you know what, you were late today, this is our attendance policy. And that way employees have something they can reference and they know that they are being treated the same as any other employee within the company. Um, but the, most, the biggest thing to remember with these handbooks is you can start small. There's no need for you to go out and create you know, a 50-page handbook right off the bat. If you're a small company, start with a couple, couple policies that make sense to you and then increase your policy as your company grows. Um, but the final note I want to leave you with is I do think it's important for you to have an employee handbook and it is something that your company should invest in. My clients often ask how they can get started with their employee handbooks. And the best way to get started is with an introduction. This is a great way for you to let employees know about your history of the company and why you got started. I often think of these introductions as similar to those menus when you go to restaurants and they tell you who the founders are, what got them inspired, and why they started their restaurant. Your introduction can do a similar thing and make employees feel comfortable with the company and truly understand why it started. The next thing that you can talk about is your company values. So you can go over those key phrases and values that you guys have loved from the very beginning of starting your company. Um, a way for you to come up with your values, if you don't currently have them, um, is to have a meeting with your team and start discussing those reasons why the, the employees wanted to work for your company in the first place. Um, along the similar vein is your mission statement. So this statement is letting employees know why you do what you do. And similar to this, you could have your team meet and discuss reasons why you started the company and what makes you get out of bed in the morning. Another thing to think about is an about us statement. So the about us statement can go over your products and your services and what your company really does to service your community. Um, it can also talk about ways that you set yourself apart from competitors. Um, another thing that I think is fun is your logo. If you guys have a company logo that means something, let your employees know about it. Um, I know a couple months ago, Zenefits actually rebranded and we have a new logo. And so our team actually sat us all down and they showed us a video that really let us understand why we have a new logo and how the logo is a mixture of our company values. And some other things to consider addressing is additional perks your company offers. So whether or not you have maybe a book club that everyone can join, 
or maybe you allow employees to have voluntary time off. This would be a great place to let those new hires know what's available to them. Something else to think about is company, logo, uh, company lingo. So everyone's been that new hire that walks into the office and all they hear is acronyms and they're not quite sure what's happening. This could be a great place for you to list out all of the lingo that your company uses and then those new hires can reference that in the future. So when you think about this introduction, I want you to think about adding these different elements as a welcome to those new hires. It's important that you make sure they feel connected to the company and they know that the company supports them and wants to offer them a great experience. Our team is often asked, how do we actually get employees to read our employee handbook? It's a great question. Um, having an employee handbook is an important first step, but actually having employees read it is far more important. Um, the first thing that I would focus on is making it engaging. So find ways to make employees want to read your handbook. You could do this by including interviews with your upper management that employees can read through. You could include photos of team members so they know the people they'll be working with. Um, you could also do interviews with fellow employees about their experience with the company. Another thing to keep in mind is you want to have your employee handbook um, be concise and easy to understand. This is not the time to use legal jargon. Instead, you want employees to understand what they're reading and know what benefits are available to them. Um, another a suggestion I would have is don't be afraid to add humor into your handbook. This doesn't have to be all business, and humor is a way for employees to know, you know this company is fun to work at, it is a good environment. Um, another thing to consider is visual aids. So I've reviewed a lot of handbooks, um, and the, the ones that I enjoy the most are ones that invest in some kind of visual guide, whether it's having a picture next to their policies or even housing their, employee, their handbook online and having videos that employees can watch. That being said, I've also seen handbooks that are just pictures, so remember there's moderation in everything. Um, the last thing to consider is how you organize your handbook. A lot of time companies will just list out all of the policies that they have. Instead, I would start with a great introduction. I would have interviews with your executives. Um, I would go over your about us and your mission statements. And then I would dive into some fun benefits and perks you offer your employees. And then you can get to the nitty gritty. No matter what you decide to do, I just think you should be considering ways for your employees to want to read this handbook. One question I get a lot is, we've created our company handbook, now how do we launch it? It's a great question. Um, you have your handbook and now you want to make sure employees have access to it and can read it. Now, before actually sending out your handbook, I would consider adjusting the name. I know that employee handbook is the standard name that everyone uses, but it can seem a little bit strict and daunting to new hires. Something to consider is even making the adjustment to the employee guidebook or something a little bit simpler. Um, one company that's gotten a lot of press is the Motley Fool Company, and they've actually changed their handbook name to The Fool's Rules just to make it more enticing to employees. The next thing you really want to think about is how to present that handbook to new hires. In Zenefits, admins have the option to send out the handbook alongside an offer letter so employees can read it on their own time. While this is a really great option, I would also consider maybe even having a presentation on the first day of an employee's um, week. You could sit employees down and go through policies that you find most important or even fun benefits they should be aware of. Um, another suggestion is if you don't have time for that half hour of orientation, you could put the handbook on the new hire's desk so they see it first thing in the morning and then give them some time to read it. Um, no matter which option you choose, you will want to make sure employees sign an acknowledgement form stating that they did read the handbook and they understand the policies within it. Today we've talked about the reasons why companies should have an employee handbook, how to get started with these handbooks, how to make them more engaging, and finally, how to make sure your employees are reading the handbook. Um, later this month, I want to focus more on the policies that your company should have within your handbook, and I hope you join me next time.